dead. Oh, thank God. Oh, oh my God. Oh. I'm standing right in front of her. I spine shot at her on accident and I forgot to aim a little bit low. So I just walked up to her and put the bolt in her head. Ah, it's horrible. Huh? At the corn pile. Just quartering to me. <sighs> this is horrible. I hate doing that. <sighs> I hate this. Like top long spine shot. I forgot to aim a little bit low. She she fell immediately and then kind of crawled away a little bit. This is a horrendous blood trail. It's only about 30 yards, but she was crawling. I had to get out of the tree. I had to, uh, but at least she's dead now. Uh, I feel bad. You did that too, didn't you? I don't want to do this ever again. I want to make sure I uh, clean ethical shots. What's up guys? Had a uh, morning hunt today and um, I ended up not seeing anything at all. Glennie saw three or four and he just called me, said he's got a big doe on the ground. So we're going to head up there and see what we got. Um, I'm down here right now making a new spot on the edge of this field. I'm gonna get up in that tree right there, I think. Right there. So, let me see how this goes. And then uh, make my little spot real quick and then I'm gonna get up there and see what he's got on the ground. Well guys, looks like Glennie's got a deer down. <clears throat> Big doe. We got to say Mr. TRK. Stand is right there. Trail camera and the big pile are right there. And then, bam. She only went about 30, 35 yards. Yeah. All right, let's get this thing gutted out and get her home and processed. This year, you guys are finally going to get a skinning video. Stay tuned. Okay, guys, first step of this process the gutting i know we touched on it last year but this year we're going to get into a pretty good detailed video then we're going to do a skinning video and then probably a meat processing video and they will be three separate videos so this will be the beginning of the gutting video here we go okay so last year like you saw on the buck you start by cutting the nuts off this is actually a really big dough spider runner with the dough you don't start by cutting the nuts off, you go in her lady parts, put the type tip of the knife in the lady parts, right on the, on the, uh, just the tip, like, just under the skin, and you just peel up a little bit. So you can open the skin like that. It would work if you had a sharper knife, but you know. And then you just take the tip of your knife, just the very tip of your knife. And keep just working a bigger hole straight up the middle. Just like that. And once you can get under the skin, you get two fingers under the skin. Makes it easier sometimes. And you can guide your knife all the way up like that. Or you can just keep doing it as I'm doing. Just using the tip of your knife. And then you can uh, keep using the tip of your knife. Just keep working your way up. Get up under that skin. That's her milk pouch from being a mother. The babies, as you saw in the video, weren't really babies anymore. They're plenty old enough to survive. Yep, they were eating corn. So, again, you just the tip of your knife. If you go too far in without, you know, past the tip, you're gonna bust the guts open. 
and that you do not want to do for smell purposes and for meat purposes meat purposes you don't want to get all them fluids on your meat so again you just expose as much as you can like that and right now I'm just cutting away at the there's not much milk left either extra a lot of people eat that too this whole milk pouch thing yeah like the udders and stuff oh this is like a oh. glob of meat yeah okay I forget what it's called but a lot of people eat it and what I'm doing now is see this is the stomach lining I need to get under that stomach lining now that this is all exposed so first what I'm gonna do is cut away this so I have room to work because that milk pouch milk sack whatever it's called is in my way so I'm just gonna cut that away so that way it's not in my way anymore Okay, now the, this is all exposed. Start down as low as you can, because if you go down too far, you hit the bladder. But just stick the tip of your knife in again. And just do it little by little. See, I exposed some guts right there. Now once you're in the guts, these are the guts, this is the lining. Stick your fingers up under the lining and pull up. Stick your knife in between your tips of your fingers, just like that. So that way you're not, you're not like that, you're not like this. You're just like that, just the very edge tip is sticking out between your fingers. And then you're just gonna push on the bottom of the knife and just guide it up. That way you know 100% fact you're not gonna hit any of them guts. Now once you get up there again, you have to uh, re-expose everything. See, this is all guts. And it's just very intricate. I mean, once you've been doing it for years and you've done enough deer, you can just fly through this. I'm only going this slow so I can show you guys exactly how to do it. Pull up on the lining, the fur. That helps. See, I got a lot of space here between the guts and, and again, just notice I didn't use my fingers that time, but that's because I'm pulling up on it, so I got a good inch of space between. And then when you get to the brisket, you don't got to worry about those guts anymore. So you just stick your knife in. See, that's the brisket right there, the bone. And you're just going to give it a couple. Boom. Boom. You hit it long. You hear it? Yep. I deflated it long. You just give those nice slices all the way up the brisket. Until you reach as far up to the throat as you can go. Because you're going to have to cut that out. All right, and that's that. That's how you open her up. Now, if you do a, uh, if you're gonna get your deer mounted, you don't want to go up that far because you'll mess up the shoulder mount. You want to stop right about here. But anyway, so now you have these connections here. Just you have to cut those away. She bled out pretty good. See how I cut all that away right there on that side. Then you do the same thing on the other side. You have this section here that separates the, all these organs from all these organs, the heart and the lungs. And then this is the whole stomach area. You have this whole big separation piece. Looks like your arrow, your arrow uh, punctured the guts a little Unless bit. Unless that was your knife. No? No, well, I didn't go down that far with the knife yet. So, again, you gotta cut that separation, avoiding cutting the guts. All right, and then you're gonna reach up here in the throat, grab the esophagus. Once you get a firm grip of it, and just cut the esophagus. And now, once that's separated, you're gonna reach down till you can feel the spine with your fingertips. You're just gonna get underneath of everything. Once you're under everything, there's the esophagus. You're just gonna pull it all straight back out. See this lining's still connected right here. So I gotta cut that before I can actually pull it all out. So you cut that lining. Okay, cutting that side first. Okay. 
cut that lining. Once that lining's cut, you can just rip it all on out. And that is how you got your deer. You got your two big tenderloins. There's no organs left in there at all. No organs left at all. Completely empty. A lot of people take the bladder out here in the woods. I don't choose to do that because I uh, don't want to risk popping it. To me, it's a lot easier to access when you're hanging it up. So, what I'll do is I'll get down as far as I can on the intestines and just cut the intestines out. Like I said, get as much of it as you can. Intestines are real rubbery. It's hard to cut through even with a sharp knife. And that's that. There's your gutted deer, ready to take home. What I do is, now I'll dump it over, dump all the blood out, get it uh, into the vehicle, go to your nearest Royal Farms or wherever, get a bag of ice and stick the bag of ice right in the rib cage. Keep it cool. Unless it's below 40 degrees. Yeah, unless it's below 40. But uh, or also depending on how far you away you are away from home. Um, after that. You're going to see the next process in the next video, so look out for that. He did a good job. See you next time on Double O.